Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Sydney vs GWS battle for the bridge as they sort of call it. Well, not really, no one really calls it the Battle of the Bridge because the, the Harbour Bridge doesn't separate them. It would be the Battle of the Anzac Bridge, so I guess it's just um, the Sydney Derby or whatever you want to call it, Derby. Um, and yeah, Sydney came out on top yet, uh, well, again, they came out on top, um, beating GWS in a, a very, very much of a grudge match in the first sort of 45 minutes or so, and then this one's um, kicked away in the end. Um, the loss of Tom Green was huge for GWS, I mean, and I think that was a bigger out than Tom McCartan going down for the Swans, as the Swans had Robbie Fox in coverage. And he just went down there and basically was almost a like-for-like -like replacement. And Dane Rampey almost just went up one size um, in the key, uh, guarding on the key forwards. And it actually almost worked better as after half time. I don't think the key forwards for GWS even kicked a goal or something like that. Um, maybe they kicked one Hogan or something. But um, yeah, they were pretty much unsighted after half time. But anyway, um, before we jump into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the recap. So, no one would have known this, but um, yeah, Brody Grundy is uh, pretty good, <laughs> at, and he would be very, very useful now, uh, given the calamity that we've had. Um, so yeah, maybe it's just a case of holding on to those guys like Brody Grundy. I, man, this season has just gone to absolute hell after about... <laughs> It was so good for the first sort of four to five rounds. Um, yeah, Brody Grundy was absolutely immense. Probably going to be, I mean, there's about five or six swans that are all in there in the votes um, or close to the the votes, and one of them is Brody Grundy. He had a huge second half of eighty four fancy points. I believe he ended up with a, like a one forty super coach or something score. It was a crazy great game for him. I can actually look it up here. One forty three super coach score. So he was absolutely immense with his 134. Will Haywood, um, a little bit quiet in the first term, but absolutely huge in the second and in the third, where he kicked uh, three in the third, which ultimately got the game rolling in this one's favour. I forgot what the score was at halftime, but I'm sure it was um, relatively close. And then in the second half, the Swans just seemed to blow them away. Yeah, it was um, it was 44 to 35 at halftime, so nine-point margin. And then the Swans in the second half kicked... Eight goals, six, two, five goals, four. So they uh, kicked away in the second half, it seems. And um, yeah, they were able to just, on the back of Will Hayward kicking three in this in the third, they were able to get away from the GWS. And it really, um, at uh, three-quarter time, it was, um, it was mostly in the last quarter that they actually did a lot of their work. Uh, but yeah, Will Hayward uh, kept them in the game in the, in the third with his three. And was almost, I think it was highest rated player, but yeah, could have easily been best on ground when the votes come out. Isaac Heaney, 99, he did his work as well. Um, a little bit annoying that he could have easily gotten to a, sort of a ton or a 110 score, but sort of slowed down a little bit. Um, second half was a little bit slow, but again, done his job, did like a 120 or a 115 in Supercoach, something like that. Uh, let's just double check this. Uh, yeah, 109 in Supercoach, so did his job there. Uh, Chad Warner, 99 as well. He did his job as well. Um, I thought he was really damaging in the first half, um, even though it doesn't really show it. And then in the third as well, he was pretty good. Uh, last quarter, got a goal and, um, yeah, did a lot of fancy work in the last quarter, but I don't think it was that efficient. Um, and I think that's what let him down a little bit. And then you've got, um, just looking here, yeah, 50% by foot. Um, then you've got uh, Eric Gunn, won the medal on the day. I think it was... Uh, a little bit of a debated medal, to be honest with you. I didn't think his work was necessarily the greatest by foot. I think he had something like 13 turnovers and 10 clangers, which is, I think, going down in the record books is one of the worst turnover games for a Swan. Um, so to get the medal, I thought was a little bit weird, given he was about the 10th best uh, rated player on the ground um, and thought that Will Hayward was sort of the difference between the two sides to be honest and then Brody Grundy who uh, didn't show up in the medal count at all um, but yeah he did um, did his work Errol Gordon and got a goal and I think in the second that really started to open the game up from um, from that point onwards but yeah just I think it was 13 turnovers six in the first six in the third really did uh, sort of not uh, paint the best picture on this game 
Road bottom, two goals, 94. He was pretty good. Rampy uh, was really needed in this game after uh, McCartan went down, and he ended up with an 87. Just through a lot of, um, I guess, that uh, uncontested marking when they were swapping it a lot. James Jordan really dominated his matchup against the likes of Whitfield. Uh, Whitfield only got a 48, and he got a 67, 68, sorry. And yeah, he just uh, got a cheeky goal from about 60 out, which helped. And then um, in the second half, was just getting a lot of um, a lot of possessions here, as you can see. Um, McLean was really good secondary ruck, sort of beat down on um, the likes of uh, who was secondary ruck for them. I think they had, let's actually check here. Um, they had Briggs as the number one cabman and also Riccardi. And yeah, you can sort of see that uh, McLean as a secondary ruck, I think his hit out to advantage was like 56% from five or something. So yeah, he really dominated as that secondary ruck. Adam, 67, not really going to be... I think that's sort of what he's going to be doing as the Swans. Um, he's going to have spike games of 90, but he's also going to have games like this where he just... He does what he needs to do for the side. I think he also has said that in a couple of interviews that um, he'll do what he needs to do to get the side over the line, and that's basically what he did when he needed to have that sort of hard edge um, contested ball. I think that's what he did. Um, if we look at Taylor Adams, 11 contested possessions up there with the likes of Will Haywood. Will Haywood, 11 contested possessions sort of shows where he was. Um, but yeah, up there with um, the likes of Chad Warner, Errol Goulden, um, Rowbottom in terms of contested possessions, but a limited number of possessions in general with only, um, where is he now? Uh, Taylor Adams, only 18 touches. So yeah, really high contested rate. Uh, McInerney. 66, Lloyd, Papley, Cunningham, Roberts are 49, just the wet conditions really sucked for him, a last quarter of three didn't help, Fox 46, Florent, uh, McDonald, Blakey, Melican, Wicks, Amadi, and McCartan subbed out with a concussion, and so he'll miss a week, um, and watch out for potentially Francis, well, it's not going to make any difference, because they'll just be straight out of the side, but Francis... Um, Hamling, Edwards, or uh, Robbie Fox will take his place, I reckon. Um, GWS Peatling came into the midfield for um, for the likes of Tom Green, which we'll get to, and he looked really good. Um, a 115 for him, second week in a row that he's gone sort of large for his price tag of like 370k, I think. Uh, Callahan 101, he's again proving that he'll be really good, and I think he's off the halfback flank, so hopefully we can get a a DPP for him just because next year that could be useful having a guy off half back. Um, just again, getting these guys out of the midfield only uh, realm is sort of uh, crucial for fantasy. Um, Kate, Kelly 92, Daniel 90, Ward 90, Perriman. Um, Perriman, one that I'm sort of in interested about if he does move. Um, 640k at the moment, and I don't know what he's exactly averaging, but I'm pretty sure it's way to down a little bit. Briggs, Himmelberg, and Taylor Green, um, Toby Green, 61, even though he moved a little bit into the midfield. Um, yeah, it just shows that, uh, I mean, he probably is almost going to be a top 10 forward just because of the way the forward line is shaping up at the moment. But man, this is horrific. Um, Ash Jones, where Buckley, Cadman, I'm not too worried about Whitfield. He just got tagged completely out of the game. And I think it was absolutely crucial and also doesn't help that it was a wet day. So we only had, what's that, one mark the whole day. So yeah, not too worried. One mark, two free kicks against, um, I think he gets back to his best and his best is 36, 30 and 6. So he didn't have that today uh, or yesterday at, uh, where he only had 19, 1 and 1. Um, so yeah, he's 10 possessions short as well as a couple marks, a couple tackles short of what he can do. Hogan, Riccardi, Brown, Bedford, um, Harvey Thomas came on early into the piece in the second quarter and ended up with a 31. So beat his break even, but that break even is destroyed now. Um, expected to go up to probably 40, 45 again. So he's on that sort of trend again of doing that. So yeah, I think that's just the, and then Tom Green subbed out. That's unlucky. I did trade him in in um, Supercoach and that probably ruined the Supercoach season, but that sort of just sums up um, the Supercoach season in oh, just, Fancy and Supercoach in general this year. The sub rule as well as some um, untimely injuries have really caused some havoc. Um, and I think that's just one thing that's um, really to learn on next year is just these guys with job security um, are absolutely huge off the bench um, as they'll make cash slowly and surely uh, rather than sort of just going for these quick fixes um, as they sort of are band-aid fixes overall. Um, but anyway, that is the video there going through the Sydney Derby in which Sydney ended up um, running out, what's that, 
29 point winners top of the ladder now after G uh, after Geelong's loss to Melbourne which we'll get to in a second I believe we're getting to that yeah that'll be the third game of the recap of today but yes yeah, ones ended up uh, just getting the job done against um, GWS and going to seven and one so I guess I will see you guys in the next recap which will be the St Kilda North game so see you in that game bye guys <laughs>